today we would be doing this question where we are asked is the function f r to r defined by f x equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 1 to 1 y or y naught and then we are asked to find the range of the function. So let's first understand a 1 to 1 function. A function f from a to b is called 1 to 1 if whenever f a 1 is equal to f a 2 then a1 should be equal to a2. What this definition is trying to say is if you have a set A and you have a set B and there is a mapping F from A to B. So your A is the domain and B is the range. So if you have A1 and A2 are two elements in the domain which map to F A1 in the range and f a2 in the range. So if the function is 1 to 1 and you are given that f a1 is equal to f a2 then it should be the case that a1 is also equal to a2. That is no element of b is the image of more than one element in a. So a function is 1 to 1 if every input has a unique output. You can see that 1 is associated with 6, 2 is mapped to 5 and 3 is mapped to 7. So every element in the domain has a unique image. And note that it is okay if any element in the range is left unmapped. Now consider a second example, many to 1. Here two values of the domain are mapped to a single value in the range. So 3 is mapped to 7 and 4 is also mapped to 7. So your single value in the range that is 7 is mapped to 2 values in the domain. So this is a many to one function and not a one to one function. So for one to one function you need to have a distinct image in the range. Now coming back to the question we were asked that if fx is a one to one function. Now for a one to one function if fx1 is equal to fx2 then we have to prove that x1 is equal to x2 so this is what we have to prove now we are given that f of x1 is equal to f of x2 we know that fx is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 note that here input is x so that's why you have x here but if we change your input to x1, then this x value would change to x1, which would give us x1 minus 2 whole square plus 3. And again, if you substitute this x with x2, that would give us x2 minus 2 whole square plus 3. Now this 3 and this 3 gets cancelled which gives us x1 minus 2 whole square is equal to x2 minus 2 whole square. Now note a small thing that if you have x square is equal to 4 then your x would be plus minus 2 but if you have a sole value of root 4 then this would be equal to 2. The difference of plus minus 2 and here is only plus 2 is that this is in the equation form whereas this is only a number. So using the same logic here we see that it is in an equation form. So we will write it as x1 minus 2 would be equal to plus minus x2 minus 2. Now there will be two cases. Case 1 when x1 minus 2 is equal to x2 minus 2 and case 2 will be x1 minus 2 is equal to 
माइनस ऑफ x2 टू माइनस टू सो फर्स्ट सॉल्विंग दिस दिस माइनस टू एंड दिस माइनस टू गिट्स कैंसिल्ड विच गिवस दिस x1 वन इज इक्वल टू एक्स टू विच इज वॉट वी वॉन्टेड टू प्रूव सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस केस द फंक्शन इज अ वन टू वन फंक्शन नाउ लेट्स कम टू दिस केस If you solve this case, you will get x one minus two is equal to minus of x two plus two, which would give us x one plus x two is equal to four. We know that x one and x two are both real numbers, so there can be infinite combinations where x one plus x two is equal to four. So let's consider some of the possible combinations, which are one plus three is equal to four, or minus one plus five, which is again equal to four, or two plus two is equal to four, or zero plus four is equal to four. There can be infinite combinations, but I'm just taking these four cases here. Now, as you can see, that this is the only case where x1 is equal to x2 note that for the function to be 1 to 1 if fx1 is equal to fx2 then x1 should be equal to x2 for all the possible values of x1 and x2 in the entire domain which is r in our case but here this condition is only satisfied for one single value that is 2 in the entire domain but for 1 to 1 the condition should be true for all the possible values thus this is not a 1 to 1 function in this case it is a 1 to 1 function but for this case we proved that it is not a 1 to 1 function and if we want to prove a function to be a 1 to 1 function then it should hold true for all the cases but as we can see that it is not 1 to 1 for this case thus the function is not a 1 to 1 function you can also validate your answer by just taking two random values such that Your f x one is equal to f x two. Let me take x one is equal to one. So that would give me one minus two whole square plus three. It is equal to minus one whole square plus three, which is equal to four. And let me take another value three. So this is equal to three minus two whole square plus three. This is equal to one square plus three, which is equal to four. Note that here f of one is equal to f of three, which is equal to four, but one is not equal to three. Thus, as proved above, this function is not a one to one function. Now, coming to the range of the function, so we were given that f x. is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 and we were asked to find the range of this function the range of a function is set of all the values that the function takes so there are two methods to calculate the range of the function one is a graphical method another method is the mathematical method i will show the range using both the methods i will suggest that you understand both the methods because sometimes drawing a graph of a function is really difficult then you can easily use a mathematical method and derive the range so let's first consider graphical method for this as we know that the graph of a parabola that is fx is equal to x square is a parabola the graph of this function is of the form where you draw a u at the origin but we have to draw the graph of x minus 2 whole square plus 3 so let's first draw the graph of this part that is 
एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स माइनस टू होल स्क्वायर एज यू कैन सी हेयर योर आउटपुट वॉज जीरो वेन योर एक्स वैल्यू वॉज जीरो हेयर वी हैव शिफ्टेड द ओरिजिन बाई टू यूनिट्स सो योर आउटपुट वुड बी जीरो वेन एक्स माइनस टू होल स्क्वायर वुड बी जीरो और x माइनस टू वुड बी इक्वल टू जीरो और x वुड बी इक्वल टू टू सो दस योर ग्राफ विल शिफ्ट टू दी राइट बाय टू यूनिट्स दैट इज योर ग्राफ विल लुक लाइक नोट दैट योर ग्राफ हैज शिफ्टेड इट्स ओरिजिन बाय टू यूनिट्स दैट इज वॉट वी कैलकुलेटेड हेयर बट वी वॉन्टेड टू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ एफ एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स माइनस टू होल स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री so now your entire output is shifting by 3 units so your graph will shift up will shift up by 3 units thus your graph will look like as you can see that here your graph has shifted by 3 units thus this graph is the final graph for your given function now how to find the range of this graph to find the range you can see that there is no y value which is below 3 so your minimum y value is 3 which is also included so the minimum is 3 but your maximum y value is infinity so as your input increases your output also increases we know that your domain can be any infinite number suppose 10 lakhs then your range would also be 10 lakhs minus 2 whole square plus 3 which would be a huge number if you increase your x value to 100 billion so your fx would also keep increasing thus as you increase your x values your fx would tend to increase and that would go on till infinity so this is your final range now let's look at the mathematical method method 2 which is a mathematical approach now in order to use the mathematical approach we would be using a slightly different version of the definition which says that the range of the function is same as the domain of the inverse function i have already covered this method in detail in my earlier videos so i would recommend that you revise the method from that video according to this method algorithm to solve for the range is that we have to first interchange for x and y and then we have to solve for y that is we were given that fx is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 and we know that fx is equal to y this implies that your y is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 the first step is that we have to interchange x and y that is in place of y we have to write x and in place of x we will write y and everything else will remain same and now we have to solve for y so simplifying this equation would give us x minus 3 is equal to y minus 2 whole square which is equal to x minus 3 plus minus under root is equal to y minus 2 thus y is equal to plus minus under root of x minus 3 plus 2 so as per this definition the range of the function is same as the domain of the inverse function and this expression is the inverse function and we are asked to find the domain so for this function to be defined we want that x minus 3 should be greater than equal to 0 this implies x should be greater than equal to 3 
that is this function is defined for all the values of x which are greater than or equal to 3 so x would belong to 3 to infinity here we are including 3 but we are not including infinity so this is the domain of the inverse function which is equal to the range of the given function thus this is our desired range